welcome back to Farming Simulator and today I want to have a chat about leasing or buying equipment and whether it when and whether it's a good idea to do either and we're going to jump into PowerPoint in a minute and have a look at some of the numbers but I just wanted to show you how much it costs to lease something um, and I have if I can find the right uh, there we go. No. Where's my mod? Where's my installed mods? There it is. So I have edited this uh, um, cultivator to be a hundred thousand pounds, just so we can see what the costs are. Um, so the the cost just to lease it is um, two percent, and then per month it says per day, but it is per month. There's a one percent charge. Um, so if you're running say two day months that'll be split in half for each day and then a per hour and that's real time hour of 2.1 percent so that's what it costs to lease things i'm just going to jump in to powerpoint now and we're going to work through the costs and some examples and stuff so i think the first thing to think about whether you want to lease or buy something is do you need to be able to customize it while after you've purchased it or leased it or whatever because obviously if you lease things you can't customize them so that is a limitation um so you know maybe if you've got you've only got one tractor on the farm for example um and so you want to be able to switch the wheels over between you know normal or wide and uh narrows for doing field work you know fertilizing that kind of thing you probably want to purchase that or you'd have to have two um so there's that kind of thing to think about. Is it something that you are going to need to customize a lot through the time that you have it in your possession? Um, the next thing is the fees. So I've just covered that, but just to go over them again, there's an initial fee of 2% to lease the item. And then there is a per month fee of 1%. I know the game says per day. That's a hangover from when Giants had it as you could only have one day months i have tested and if you have multiple days per month that one percent is split across so um with the example i had on the screen where it was a thousand pounds per month to lease it if you go to two day months you get charged 500 per day um and then there is a per hour of 2.1 percent so um what you really need to think about and i'll go into a bit more of the detail in a moment is you know few other things if it's a one-off job then i'd probably lease it because there's very little point in you owning it um what i haven't looked at in that situation is if you buy it use it for a bit and sell it um the depreciation is generally quite high so i've not considered that but if you think i should then stick a comment below and i'll go back and have a look at that um i've just considered buying to keep and use or leasing and returning so um let's jump to the next slide which is um so what we've got here is um down the left the number of hours per year you would be using a piece of equipment that you've leased and then the number of years that you plan to have it leased for um so this is for example thinking about maybe you pick up a combine on a long-term lease or a cedar or whatever and i'll do some examples in a moment um but basically you know if if, if you're gonna own you know let's say if you only normally play on a save for a couple of years it's probably worth you leasing a lot of stuff um, because you're not going to get the um you're going to spend a lot less um if you generally play for a long time so you know if you'd like to play for sort of five plus years it's probably worth you buying the kit early on because you're going to save yourself a bit of money um it's obviously very situational so just to go through what's on here you know so if i pick a point um where my mouse is now so if you generally you know if you're looking at playing for four years um and it's something that you only use for a couple of hours a year so maybe a feed mixer something like that it's probably worth you leasing it it's going to save you some money um if it's something that you use for a bit longer like a, a cedar or a combine you're probably sitting in this kind of depending on how big your farm is maybe four to six seven hours and at that point 
may be worth you buying it. Um, the other thing that I've not factored in here is you could maybe pick something up in the sale where it's, you know, going to be like half of the cost and suddenly, you know, it's probably worth, if you can get it in the sale, it's probably worth buying it in the sale. Um, yeah, so just kind of a guide here as to, you know, if you play for a long time and it's something you use a lot, you probably want to buy it, assuming you want to keep it. I've not factored in maintenance costs into that. Um, but if you're on a long-term lease, you're going to have to do maintenance as well. So, you know, same thing really applies probably there. Um, but, you know, th things that you, you don't use often, generally maybe think about leasing them if and this this assumes leasing them for the whole period you know something like a combine you might only need for a couple of days of the year or a couple of months depending on how it works out and then you know you're saving a lot on the leasing cost then because you, you just lease it during harvest season you lease it for a few months and you return it then you don't have any maintenance costs um so yeah, that, that probably works out a lot cheaper. These are looking at long-term leasing rather than that kind of short-term lease. Might chuck a couple more examples in at the end. So um, we'll come back to that, I think. So using the, the bit that I've just spoken about, so, um, and I've pulled numbers from some of my Let's Plays. So the, um, the Cedar Combine example that I used, um, on my my greenlands let's play which is a fairly big farm i think um the cedar and the combine are getting used for about five hours a year um so if i flick back and i look along this five hour line um if i'm playing that for three you know like three years it's going to be 70 percent i'm only going to pay 70 percent of the purchase cost to lease it so maybe i should have thought about leasing the combine or the seed and that's assuming that i keep them for the whole year not just for the season that i need them um and then you know something like a mixer wagon so um i think these numbers i've taken from my calmston let's play um and obviously you you would want to keep the mixer wagon because it's something that you use quite often but you only use it for a very short amount of time um again maybe something like a trailer as well that might be another good example um and you know, in that case where you're only using it for, you know, we're up in this area, actually, unless you're playing for a really long time, it's cheaper to lease it, particularly if it's something that you don't need to change the configuration of. A straw blower is another good example of that. Um, so I'm just going to work out a couple more examples of that short term, like harvest season, and I'll be back. Yeah, I've just quickly done this one as well. So thinking about like a cedar or a combine where you know generally your harvest or planting window is quite small um so maybe you only need it two months of the year um so you lease it for a two-month block so that's going to cost you two percent of the value um and then in those two months you use it for about five hours so that's um 10.5 percent so per year then you'd be looking at paying about 12 and a half percent of the value of the cedar or the combine to to lease it each year so you know if you were playing for you know on a map for like three years you'd only be paying 37 and a half percent of the cost of buying the combine to lease it and you could just use it and return it so you wouldn't have any maintenance costs which is obviously a bonus and then you know if you're up at sort of you know maybe five years then you know, if I can quickly work my calculator because my brain's a bit tired, you're only at 60, excuse me, 62 and a half percent of the purchase price. You've got no maintenance costs. If you can do it within the fuel that's in the combine, you've got no fuel costs because you don't get charged for that. So, you know, at that point, yeah, same, same goes for a forage harvester. You know, probably much more economical to lease it than, uh, than buy it and sit and keep it and have to maintain it and fuel it and all that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, there's, there's that, there's that, that angle to consider. Um, I'm going to jump back into the game now because a couple of other bits that I want to talk about. So. So, yeah, I, th I think hopefully that's been somewhat useful in terms of deciding where you might want to lease a piece of kit or buy it. Obviously, there's a big element of personal preference as well. Um, 
if you are playing with, you know, you've given yourself a load of money at the start, you might want to go and buy a load of kit. That's what I did on my Greenland save, you know. Um, you might pick something up in the sales and then, you know, that changes things because, you know, you, you get you can get some quite good discounts. You know, you're looking at 40, 60 percent discount and then that kind of changes things a lot. Um, the other thing for PC players is lease to own. Um, and that isn't really going to save you money. It's more spreading out the cost. So with lease to own, the example that they use is around leasing a piece of kit for about three years and using it for about 20 hours. So that's, that's a reasonable amount of usage. Um, and at that point, you'd pay if you leased it for that long and then you pay the final payment to keep it you actually pay 102 percent of the purchase cost so you pay a bit more but you're spreading that out you know you're essentially paying a little bit of interest um so lease to own is not really about saving you money it's about spreading out that purchase cost and uh, it's probably still cheaper than borrowing the money up front and paying loan interest but yeah i think the the, the things in my mind so so what i typically do in a let's play is um unless i'm doing something where i'm not worried about finance so um so my currently i have two let's plays running like that i have my greenlands one where i took out i had a 10 million pound loan and i used some of that loan to buy all the kit i wanted um or my acting and park when where it was about how maze plus work so i had all the kit to start with um but typically on a let's play i would not buy a combine I would lease a combine for the reasons that I said before, particularly as my farms are quite often smaller. Um, so, you know, I might lease a combine for a couple of months, but I'll probably only use it for a couple of hours as well. Um, so at that point, I'm, you know, my, my, my lease costs are down in the kind of five, six percent of purchase cost. And it would take a very long time for me to justify buying a combine unless I can pick one up in the sales for a good price. Um, equally, something like a forage harvester, I'd probably only use for a single day, maybe for an hour or two. Um, so at that point, I'm not even leasing for a month because, you know, I'll probably lease it for a day to harvest, to, to forage my, my, maize, my maize silage um, and then return it. So definitely not worth me buying it from a finance point of view. Um, and I wouldn't generally, apart from the two examples I've just given. But, you know, my, my Maypole Let's Play, um, I, I didn't buy a forage harvester. Um, there's a bit of personal preference in there. You might want to buy it to have it on the farm, you know. And that, that's down to you. This is really looking at the, the financial side of things as to whether you should lease or buy. Um, quite often with a, a planter, I won't buy a planter because, again, there's probably only one or two days in the year where I'm going to want to plant crops. Um, so I might look at leasing it then, particularly, you know, if it's a big piece of kit. Um, trying to think of other examples. So things that I might look at a long term lease on if I'm struggling for finance are um, grass working kit, depending on the scale of the farm, that the hours on that can add up. But if it's smallish, um then again i might look at leasing that trailers if you don't need to change the configuration i think trailers are a really good one to lease because again you know depending on how it works you might only need to lease a a you know a big trailer for harvest season so just lease it for a couple of days again a couple of months and you only use it for a few hours so again that's one that i would definitely think about um plowing um a lot of time i will only lease i'll lease a plow because you you know you might only have one or two fields a year that you need to plow and it'll only take you a few hours and the rest of the time that plow is going to be sat useless unless you know you're picking up the another thing that would change this is if you're doing a lot of contracting work um and you're putting a lot more hours on the kit you know you know, if you if you're really big into your contracts and you're doing a lot of um seeding or plowing or cultivating contracts then then maybe yeah you what you you know your, your hours used per year is going to be a lot higher and suddenly that that balance switches and particularly again if you can pick them up in the sales 
this is a very sort of rambly video at this point because it's me giving you the see in the middle we had the these are the hard numbers you know if you're using it so many hours a year this is the cutoff point i'm now into the kind of more the, the softer how you choose to play how i like to play um and again the sales definitely will change that um if you're on pc there's the the vehicle sales customizing thing so you can have a lot more kit come up in the sales as well and i think that's a lot more realistic you know we're down at, at cleaver motors and they've got four thing four bits of used kit in stock now if you go to an agricultural dealership probably anywhere in the world they'll have lots of used kit in stock so one of the things i do like about that mod is it gives you a lot more things crop up in the sales i have a video on using that if you're interested if i remember i'll stick a card in and link it for you when i come around to doing the edit uh, yeah I, th I think i've waffled enough um i'm interested you know stick down in the comments how you, you know, how you do your decision of whether you lease or buy um and yeah, I hope you found this somewhat interesting and useful. If you did, click the like button. Again, any comments or whatever, stick them below. Um, I'm going to say thank you to the patrons and the YouTube channel members. Appreciate you all supporting the channel. And uh, I'll see you next time for a, another slightly random video.